we're t actually talking about you know the transformation of the human form and not through technology but in a cleaner biologically uh, a way which celebrates natural process and celebrates the vitality of the minded portion of the planet it's an attunement not this Gnostic thing which I evoked for you which is you know people used to say of my grandfather uh, where he'd been was so-so, where he was was hell, and where he was going was paradise. And he lived his whole life that way. Well, that's a Gnostic attitude, you know. Paradise is just a hit. Uh, I think that paradise is a frontier of language, of intentional communication. The reason for looking at all these things, for looking at the hallucinogens and the alchemy and the mythology and all this, is because these are the materials present at hand for an assault on the citadel of true being. You know, somewhere here there is a clue, somewhere here there is something that we can use. It's going to be an obscure sect, a peculiar mantra, a strange drug, a bizarre plant, a forgotten teaching, a lost alphabet, something that we can use so that, you know, I've talked about the, the tantric nature of the point of view that I'm putting out, tantric in the sense of the definition of Tantra as the short path, taking seriously the idea that in a single lifetime a human being might be able to go vast distances in the project of spiritual unfolding. That, you know, we are not uh, given or fated to uh, simply incrementally advance ourselves. It is some kind of a lottery. I mean, there are big winners, and I'm just very convinced that the way you enhance your position in the probability of all of this is through cognition. It will be an act of understanding. The final act of liberation will be an act of understanding. Yeah, well, I've always felt like that reality was a kind of uh, thing, that the way you made progress was you grasped it in the sense that you grasp a mathematical or geometric proposition or something like that. That it's something which, once understood on some level, clears the way to advance a very short distance. So that's what you're always trying to do, is create this lexical space of presumed understanding and, uh, and live inside. The basic notion here, I think, is an idea of radical freedom. I mean, this is not a cult of Terence McKenna. It is not a drug cult. It's a cult of curiosity, if it's a cult of anything. And what you're supposed to understand when you come out of here, that an open mind is a very precious thing, and it should never be given away, perhaps ever, certainly never lightly. The truth can take care of itself. It does not require your belief. The truth need not be treated as fragile. You can beat on the truth with ball-peen hammers and it will do just fine, thank you. So it, one should be respectful in the presence of truth, but not um, cowed or awed something like that. The truth wants to be appreciated, it wants to be known, it can take care of itself. Belief is toxic. All belief. Don't believe in anything. Live in the presence of the felt fact of immediate experience. Everything beyond that is conjecture. In contemporary society we are always in the past and in the future. But what is real are feelings, and feelings attain a nexus only in the moment, only in the moment. So, you know, explore the edges, keep your logical razors sharp, trust nothing that you haven't verified for yourself, and um, 
my faith is that the universe will uh, take you in and share with you its meaning and its intent and uh, its conclusion.